hey, this is, and we're going to be talking about the different digestive system functions today. Um, so not necessarily all about digestion, but the actual um, processes and some of the organs of the alum entry or the GI tract. Um, so the first thing is some terms that we need to be familiar with. So the first one is ingestion. Ingestion just means that you're taking in food or you're eating. The second one is digestion. So digestion is actually the breaking down of food, both physically as well as chemically. And we'll talk about what each of those are a little bit later. Um, I guess a quick version is physical, is just breaking them down um, by chewing and you, you physically break those food stuff apart. And then chemically is going to be um, with the, the use of enzymes or some other sort of chemical. Absorption is the movement of nutrients into the bloodstream. And then defecation is getting rid of the indigestible waste. All right, so there's two main groups of the alum or of the alimentary canal. Basically, you have the GI tract or the alimentary canal, which um, is the actual continuous hollow tube. And then you also have the di the accessory digestive organs. So basically, the GI tract is you is the opening from your mouth all the way to your anus. Okay, so there's a, it's a connected tube. Okay, that's the GI or the alimentary canal. The accessory digestive organs are all of the other organs that are associated with the digestive system, but not necessarily a part of the GI tract. So we'll go ahead and go through the alimentary canal. So the first one here is the mouth, you have the pharynx, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. That's all in order. So food starts out in your mouth. Then as you swallow, it goes into your pharynx. Then this long tube is the esophagus. From there, it enters into your stomach. Then it goes, or sorry, I'm drawing it into the liver. It's going to go into the stomach right here. And then from your stomach, it'll go through into your small intestine, which is kind of behind here. And then it's going to wrap around through your small intestine. Then basically, it's going to go into your large intestine and then back out through your anus. So some of these a little bit more specifically. So your lips are also called um, labia. Basically, they protect the anterior opening. Um, your cheeks form the lateral walls of your mouth. Then you have the hard palate. The hard palate is right up here. It's kind of the one that if you put your tongue on kind of by your teeth, you hit the hard palate. That's the anterior roof of your mouth. The soft palate is if you go a little bit deeper, if you put your tongue on the, the back part of your mouth, then you get the soft palate. And then the uvula is a fleshy projection of the soft palate. So that's kind of that thing that kind of hangs down in the back of your, your throat sometimes. Okay, so the oral cavity is the proper um, terminology for your mouth, um, but it's contained by your teeth as well. Your tongue is attached at the hyoid bone. Remember the hyoid bone is that only um, bone that doesn't articulate with another bone in your body. Um, and also the styloid process of the skull and by the linguinal um, frenulum to the floor of the mouth. Your tonsils, you have a couple of different tonsils. You have your palatine tonsils and your um, lingual tonsils. Then your mouth physiology. So you have um, something, a term called mastication. This is chewing, um, basically just moving your, you know, chewing your food. Um, so food is actually masticated um, with food and saliva. Um, so as you chew, your food is mixing. Um, the initiation of swallowing starts at the tongue, and it allows, your mouth actually allows for your sense of taste as well. All right, so your pharynx, we're moving on. So we went it through the mouth, and now we're kind of getting to the pharynx here. So that you have three regions of your pharynx. You have the nasopharynx, which hopefully makes sense that it's going to be closest to your nose. It's not actually a part of the digestive system. The oropharynx, which is posterior to the oral uh, cavity. Then the laryngeopharynx. Laryngeo meaning that it has to do with your larynx. It's almost to your larynx there. Um, below the oropharynx and it's connected to the esophagus. All right, so the pharynx physiology is that it serves as a passageway for food and for air. Food is, will be propelled to the esophagus with two muscles. Um, you have the longitudinal and the circular or the outer layer of the muscle. Food movement is um, by alternating contractions of these muscle layers. So you have two muscles. They're going to alternate contractions, and we call this peristalsis. So it's the slow rhythmic movement of food. 
And then we get to the esophagus. So the anatomy is that it, your esophagus is about 10 inches long. It'll run from your pharynx all the way down to your stomach. Um, and it goes through your diaphragm as well. The physiology is that it conducts food by peristalsis, which again is that slow rhythmic squeezing. And it's a passageway for only, um, for food, respiratory system will branch off at the pharynx. Then we get to the four layers of the GI tract. So I want you to just be aware that this inside is the lumen. This is where your actual food is going to be. So we're going to work from that food, where your food would be, all the way out. So the first layer is the mucosa layer. This mucosa layer um, is right in here. Okay, that mucosa layer is the innermost membrane. It's made up of sur surface epithelium as well as smooth muscle. Then the next one is the submucosa layer. So the submucosa is this next layer out here. Um, it's beneath the mucosa or I guess outside of it. Um, it's made up of connective tissue and it also has blood vessels, nerve endings, and lymph, um, the lymphatics. Then you have a muscularis externa level. Um, this is going to basically be a muscle level. Um, so you're going to have muscle in there that'll help to um, move food through your um, GI tract. And then the outer layer is the um, serosa layer. And this is made up of two here. We have your visceral peritoneum and your parietal peritoneum. Visceral is the outermost layer. It's continuous with the innermost. And parietal is the innermost layer. Remember, um, visceral and parietal, I always think of as going from the outermost, innermost, alphabetical. So we have parietal and then we have the visceral layer. So that basically wraps up the, the organs that we're going to go through um, in the first video. So I hope you have found that helpful.